Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the fourth grade concept of decimals on a number line. This is standard 4.2H in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 29 of the 2019 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So we have this point W, we've got a pretty standard number line working here, and it goes from 11 to 13, and we need to figure out where does that W sit on the number line. Well, when we're dealing with number lines that show decimals, really there's going to be two options. If we think about our decimal place value right here, so this is our ones place, and this is our tenths, and then we've got our hundredths over here. If we're looking at a decimal number line. We need to know well, what are these little tick marks. And decimals really have two place values that we're looking at here, tenths and hundredths. So there's either going to be ten spaces in between or a hundred spaces in between because that's how we represent decimals. And as it looks, there's not going to be a hundred spaces in between. That would not be very easy for us to see on a number line. Let's just verify we've got ten spaces in between so we know we're dealing with tenths. So to figure out the, the number of each of these tick marks, we're actually going to count the spaces to see how many spaces there are. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 spaces in between. So we are dealing with tenths. So that's helpful to know. So our W here is going to sit between 11 and 12, and we are going to have to count by tenths. And so what we could do is we could just kind of plot some of our points here we could see which of these kind of sit in the correct spot. So let's look at 11.6 first. That's A. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just count tick marks. And since we know there are 10 spots in between 11 and 12, we can just start counting them as decimals. So 11. And we're going to think this is like 11.0 right there. And so we, then we've got 11.1. 11.2, 11.3, 11.4, 11.5, 11.6. .5, 11 so there's my 11.6. It looks like we found our W immediately right there, 11.6. Let's skip over B because B and D are going to be slightly different. If we wanted to find our 11.7, well, there's two different ways we can do that. We could just start at our 11.6. And we could just move up one more, 11.7. So I'm going to put that up here, 11.7. Or we can actually realize that it's going to be 3 less than our 12. So our 12 is our 12.0. We can just kind of count backwards. So that's 12.0, 11.9, 11.8, 11.7. So either way, this one is close, but it's not quite what we are looking for. Now, We've already decided that this number line is representing tenths. So what's going on with these two? Because we've actually got hundredths over here. So where does this sit? Well, 11.07 and 11.06. Let me show you where that sits right here. We've got an 11.1 right there. And if we wanted to figure out where our 11.07 06 and 07 fit. What we need to do is we actually need to zoom into that right there. I'm going to zoom into this right down here. And I'm going to make my own little number line right here. I've got my 11.0 and my 11.1. And another way to think of our 11.1 is we can think of it as an 11.10. So 1 tenth is the same as 10 hundredths. And once we do that, that becomes a little bit easier because we see here's my 11.05. We can actually look at that 11.00. Now it becomes really easy. So here's going to be my 11.06. Here's going to be my 11.07. So you see those two are right next to each other, but those are hundredths. And all of this happens right here in this little chunk that we've already circled up here between 11.0 and 11.1. So since those two numbers went to the hundredths place, they become really, really small. They're nowhere near our point W. So our answer here is going to be A.